peoples of the worldwide federated internet. What's good? Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Forgive me. Forgive me for not being very consistent on this channel. I hope to be more consistent moving forward. I'm going to try um, discussing social political topics and delving into many of these things take much thought. I study my Bible daily. Um, I hope and pray that God would allow me to continue to do so. But doing that, it makes it hard to keep up. Now, I do keep up with news, current affairs, what's going on in the world, but it's hard to keep up with all that and have enough information and enough research behind it to do legitimate commentary on the things going on. Now, I want to kind of branch out this channel and do more than just that. Like um, one of the videos I have planned coming up, I'm going to, I'm a watch guy. I love watches. I have many different interests, but I'm going to talk about watches, review one of my favorite watches. If you want to get into uh, having something nice on your arm, it doesn't have to be crazy, ridiculous, expensive. I do own some, not many high-end Swiss watches, and I do own some watches that are not as expensive, but I will say, in my opinion, are as exquisite and are definitely respected in the watch community. So I want to branch out into that, branch out into talking about some comic books that's coming up as well and talking about tech. I'm only saying that just so you know, this channel to thinking is about many issues, my thoughts across many different things. Yesterday, I was on Clubhouse Unique app, I didn't understand the value in the Clubhouse app initially early on, but my boy Voss, I don't know if he watches this podcast, but he's on there and he had a very interesting conversation about race. Now, I will admit, I got off work, uh, did my Brook Noms World podcast and was kind of delving into uh, that Clubhouse room and I actually fell asleep on him toward the end, but the conversation was very good to start. And I realize many different things across the the different ideas that were carried in that conversation. One, and I've said this before, the issue of race is more nuanced than many of us care to admit. There's some on the on the right, more right leaning that will say racism is not a thing. And that's that's not true. And to, to make that statement is disingenuous. There's some on the left that will say racism is the cause of everything and is the biggest problem faced by minority communities. And uh, I don't think that's that's a, a correct characterization either. I don't think either one of those things are true. And I also realize that there's a lot of trauma that people are dealing with as a result of or or trauma as the effect of what has happened racially throughout I'd say throughout the history of the United States and that people have not come to grips with my my view on the issue of race is I know you see me looking up a lot because I I, I try to I try to make my words very calculated because if you say something, it's easy for people to take you out of context. Now, I'm not afraid of being taken out of context because it's guaranteed to happen. My views and my opinions are not orthodox, uh, meaning they don't run with the common and and more accepted thought of the day. So there's no doubt in my mind at some point in time, my words are going to be taken out of context. I don't fear that, but I do want to make an honest attempt 
to make sure I'm very, very precise and particular about the words that I choose. So even if I am taken out of context, I can at least say I made my best effort to make my idea and my thought clear. So here's my thought. There's a hyper, a hyper focus on race. And then there is a cognitive dissonant idea about race. Both of these things are going on at the same time. There's a group of people that at every turn, at every corner, at every open door, every issue and every obstacle they face, it's because of race. This is not true, and I believe this is a problem. And I believe this actually makes it harder to get over the idea and the issue of race. And then you have a group of people that will say racism doesn't exist. And I've heard this. I've heard that statement made. That's not true. There are racists. There are people who are racists that are in positions of power. That's true. It happens. My contention and my question always is, it's, it's multifaceted. Can someone in a position of power, or what have you, wherever they are, who is racist, stop you from succeeding? What is their ability and capacity to stop you from success? I would argue that never in human history has there been a, a, a time where the possibility for success was greater than now. You have the information of the world in your pocket. Now, that can be a good or a bad thing. Some people don't take advantage of the information we have accessible to us. For me, I always say this is a time where someone like me is thriving because I'm an information junkie. I do my best when I use my phone. Now, no doubt, I, 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 there's frivolous things we all do. Nobody's going to be, nobody's going to be void of that. We all want to be in, entertained at some point in the day to varying degrees. But I, I try my best when I'm on my phone, if I am on my phone, that whatever it is I'm doing is going to benefit me, help me learn something or help me understand something. I'm either watching a video on history, current affairs, reading an article about something that recently happened studying something in a Bible, looking up a commentary, um, watching some video about some facet of biblical history. I'm doing something or I'm trying to make sure I'm doing something that's going to benefit me. Having a conversation with friends on an app like Clubhouse, very beneficial. Right? I'm trying to do something that's going to benefit me. And in this, in this day that we live in, with the ability to do all these things, to learn all these things, with all of these different platforms that you can go to and reach out to whereby you can learn a legitimate, I'm, 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 how do I want to say this? Not necessarily, I'm not necessarily talking about learning a skill, but you can learn something. You can pick something up that can put you in a better position today than you were the day before. And with everything you do that puts you in a better position you're growing, you're, you're maximizing your capability and your ability to succeed. Does that mean there's no situation where somebody who is racist couldn't get in the way? Absolutely. There's situations where someone racist can get in the way. But in my opinion, there is an equal amount of opportunity for you to succeed past that. And furthermore, this is, we live in a different time. If this was 60 years ago and people were screaming about race and not having uh, an equal opportunity, I would give that more, more merit. I'm not saying the playing field is necessarily equal. My, my contention with people who focus on race, this is my contention. And this is why I say, I think there's a lot of trauma within I'm just I'm going to speak for for myself in the community I come from. And I'm not making this a blanket statement and I'm not saying this is everyone. 
But I think there definitely is trauma within the black community based around race. And the response to this trauma, I believe, is overblown. That statement does not mean, again, that racism doesn't exist. And the reason I repeat statements like that is because when people hear you say certain things, in their mind is implanted a thought and it's hard for them to escape that thought. And when you say something, if I, if I tell you, you can succeed or a person can't stop you, or there's different things you can do, what's implanted in a person's brain is, Oh, you're saying that racism doesn't exist. And people have to understand that that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we have a way in this day around that. There's a way through that. Again, this isn't 60 years ago. If I had a boss who discriminated against me for some racial issue, let's just say that that happened. Arguably, there's never been a time where I have more recourse, not only to take legal action, but to possibly get this person fired, especially if I can prove that what they did was because of race. If I can prove that it is a rap. 60 years ago, somebody could be racist to your face. A judge could see it. A courtroom could know it. And there was nothing you could do about it. It was a legitimate thing. So it, I, I'm, it, it doesn't, I'm not, it's not absent in my mind. The fact that there is trauma related to that, right? Because this is something these ideas and these times and emotions behind this stuff has been carried on from generation to generation. My problem is I think we're at the point now where we can actually break free of this trauma and we are not. And in my opinion, that is actually causing more problems within the black community. I'm not speaking for Hispanics because I didn't grow up in the Hispanic community. And I'm not I'm not trying to alienate the the members of my audience who are white. I'm just I'm speaking on an issue from experience being in the demographic that I'm in growing up in the hood. Living amongst black people, very few white people I interacted with growing up, I interacted with a lot of Hispanic people because I was in a hood in Brooklyn. It was black and Hispanic, a few white people here and there that you'd interact with, but not on a day to day basis. It wasn't until I got my first job. I just turned 17, got my first job. I was an intern for the New York City Transit Authority, MTA. And that was the first time in my life that I not that I saw the first time I saw white people, because growing up in New York City, you see everybody. But that was the first time in my life that I interacted with white people on a day to day basis. The funny thing is. I didn't have. I didn't have the viewpoint of of white people that most people in my surroundings had. I didn't fear white people. I didn't think that white people were inherently racist just because they were white. And honestly, when I was at work, I'll be honest with you. And this this was early on. I didn't I did not necessarily view these people any differently just because their complexion was different. Now, what was different and I knew this when talking to some of these people, I knew right away, oh, they grew up different. Their their upbringing was way different than mine's. The things that they had access to is definitely different than what I had access to. But I didn't automatically assume either racial superiority on their part or racism on their part. That's not how I viewed this situation. And I think if we can get past the point where we paint with that broad brush, I think we could actually deal with a lot of issues. Are there times where people may be not 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 sensitive or cognizant of the trauma caused by however many years of of slavery and Jim Crow and, and different impediments that black people face. Sure. There are times where people aren't necessarily when I say sensitive, I don't know if that's the correct term because I don't need anyone to be sensitive to what I've gone through. 
I don't need that. But if I'm having a conversation with someone, I at least want them to understand. All right. I see his, I see his viewpoint. I see where he's coming from. I, I, I can see how this has affected him. And I think because there's so much trauma surrounding the issue of race, we can never have a, a legitimate, good and productive conversation because it's always us versus them. Instead of instead of us looking at this and saying, all right, as a believer, right, as a believer, I understand that my war is not against flesh and blood. I understand that there is a deceiver that has been deceiving men for thousands of years that have that have put man against man, family against family, brother against brother, husband against wife, friend against friend. This is an enemy that has done this for thousands of years and is very good at it, very conniving, very cunning. So when I look at these situations, I'm not looking at I'm not looking at a person on the on the opposite side of the viewpoint I hold as my enemy. I'm looking at that person and saying, OK, I understand something a different way than they understand this. Now, that that doesn't necessarily always mean that they're right and I'm wrong or I'm right and they're wrong. That doesn't always mean that sometimes the the real conclusion is that there's nuance. There's things that maybe they need to understand and there's things that maybe I need to understand. But if it's always us and them, you never get to the point where you actually sit back and go, let me consider what this person is saying. Imagine if you if you sat down for those of you out there who are black. Imagine if you sat down to have a conversation about race with someone who you felt maybe didn't understand what, your plight and you removed emotion and you said, yo, let's just look at this logically. Let's look at how to how the family was was broken down over time. What was done to black families in slavery um, what that did psychologically to men and women and children moving forward. What are the psychological effects of that long term? And also what would happen is I think black people would understand, OK, yeah, there's issues. We know what the issues are. Once you get to the point where you can identify something that happened, you identify the root cause and you know what it is. There's no more excuse for why you still remain in your condition. If I can if I can pinpoint something in my life and I can say okay, this is a problem. This right here is a problem. Then I know I can go to that thing right there and I know if I change this or if I tweak this, this will solve this issue right here. Once you get to that point, there is no more excuse. This is this is the same thing with believers in sin. You can't plead ignorance when God has warned you, told you, showed you in the Bible how to walk, what to do. Once you've gotten to that point, there's no more excuse. You know what, what must be done biblically to walk in the spirit. This is just something that you now have to execute. You've identified you you've identified the problem. It has been pointed out. You see it. You know where it is. It's time to deal with it. And I think because we are so in the black community wrapped up around trauma, we never get to the solution. And that gives a false impression to some that are without that. Oh, racism is not a problem. You're all good. Well, yes and no. Can it stop me? If I've identified the problem and I understand the trauma that that black people have dealt with over time, if I understand that and I come to that conclusion, can it stop me? No, because I've come to the point where it's like, OK, now it's time for me to take personal responsibility for my actions, my life and my choices. There's things that I would like to do financially. There's decisions I made in the past that were unwise. That have that have led me to have to take different paths and make some adjustments. That's not the fault of the government. That's not the fault of the country and it's not the fault of anything but my own decisions. 
Now we can have a debate of whether I was in the proper position to understand the ramifications of the decisions I was making. Nonetheless, those were my choices. I can't blame that on anyone else and I can't lay that at anyone else's feet. And I think if we could get to the point where everyone on on both sides of this issue could deal with personal responsibility, then we can get to actual solutions and actual answers. But because you have one side that is in denial saying something doesn't exist and you have another side in denial saying this is the root cause of all my problems, then you have this constant headbutt and this constant clash and people can't come to legitimate real answers. Racism exists. Is racism the biggest problem I face as a black person in the United States? I'm going to go ahead and say that that's a, a big gigantic no. Can racism impede me? Possibly. Yeah, I, I would even say, yeah, it could impede. There could be somebody in a position that can do something who's racist that can do something that impedes you. But can they stop you? Can they really, really stop you? I don't want to use the Barack Obama example because I know a lot of people use it. They say, well, there was a black president, so you can, you know, that's the highest position in the land. But let's unpack that. Just four or five years ago now, the president of the United States was a black man that was elected and voted in twice. That's eight years. That's a that's a monumental, a monumental feat. That doesn't mean racism doesn't exist anymore, but that means that this country has made extreme progress. And my only problem with the conversations that happen around race is when people make it seem as though that the state of the country now is the same condition as the state of the country from 50 or 60 years ago. And that's just that is disingenuous and that is not honest. The United States has made maximum progress in this area of race. That doesn't mean that racism is eradicated. That doesn't mean that everything is fixed. But if we keep if we keep making it seem like there has been no progress at all, this is what happens. If you've ever been in any kind of friendship relationship, well, I, I don't know what, what you want to call it any situation where you're dealing with another person and that person is legitimately doing everything in their power to make progress and you constantly attack and lambast them, lamb blast them. Like you're not doing anything. You're not doing enough. You're not making a progress. I want you to make at some point that person just gives up like, all right, I was making progress and I was trying to do this, but since none of it is recognized, well, forget it. I'm just, I'm not even going to put in the effort. And I think that's the danger that that we're running into when we make when we make it seem like race has gotten nowhere and there has been no progress. And race is the biggest problem I face as a black man in the United States. Racism is real. It does exist. But racism, contrary to popular belief, is nowhere near the biggest thing or biggest problem I face as a black man. It is very low on that totem pole. My opinion, I'm always willing and open to have that conversation. Y'all know what it is. Stay frosty, people.